Hey everybody. I built a 1934 Cyborg Smith Corona Silent. I used parts from uh, the 60s, like on these paper bale rollers. Uh, the 30s ones had a brass collar inside, and they'd fall apart into th like three or four or five pieces. And so I just popped some 60s ones on there. Uh, so I used parts from the 30s, 40s, 60s, and uh, started it all. I turned a parts typewriter into a typewriter. I played with a lot of transformers as a kid, though, so I suppose it was just about seeing if it could be done, and it and it. And it can be. Um, Christmas is a great time to. S so I updated this to the floating shift plate with the spring return. In the 34, it would have just been a regular plate without any insignia or spring return. And then there was another plate behind it and stuff. I had to raise the A key up because it was lower than all the other ones. And that you do with a type bar adjusting tool like this. Um, you have no touch control here, which kind of sucks because it's a heavy, heavy touch on this thing. My other 34 has the touch control, and this was what I built. That's why I had the parts unit, so when I built this. But uh, you got the touch control. So my guess is 34 was the year of the touch control. Um, pretty good guess, huh? Um, but I had to adjust the U-bar on this, and I thought I'd do a video on that uh, adjustment since I've kind of started it and had to bend all these and made up a standards lid and all this other stuff. How This is kind of cool too. If you ever see an old phone number, how that worked is you see how you have capital letters for the first two and then the smaller case for the second and then you got your numbers. So if you were calling, you'd say, you know, operator, I need Y O eight one four six. 8146 so you'd be announcing the capital letters, the other two were irrelevant, that's why they're lowercase, and then the numbers. That's how that went. Connect the operator. Um, yeah, it turned out pretty good though. I mean, for something that I just did to see if it could be, if it would even work, it, it needed everything, everything, you know. Uh, there was, because I had fed off it, and back when I bought it, I had bought it for the case, I think, so... Parts from the escapement were missing. This U-bar here was all bent. And the thing about a U-bar is... Now I'm going to get out the adjustment manual, so hold on. Um, I threw some Corona clipper feet on it that were used. If somebody spends $200 on a typewriter off Craigslist or eBay and it's their first one and they get burned and something doesn't work, they're going to be turned off by the whole typewriter experience anyway. And that's, that's kind of where my mentality on the future of typewriters is. So if we look at this card, is that more people are probably getting turned off because they bought one and it was needing work. So here's your U-bar here. See how it's straight across on this one? That's not going to be the case with this one. It's not going to be straight across, and this one's higher up. But if we were standing this typewriter on its back, you can see the cork if, if it's standing up. If it's away from you, that trip is going to be too far between the key lever and that's all in this block here. Those are all the trips that trip the U-bar. So if that's bent away from it, what you've now got is something that, so this would be a way down, that might be just a dead key for you because it's too far, right? On other machines, you got something like this. You get in there with a screwdriver and spread the two, and there's your trip. Um... I was going somewhere with that, and I forget where now. But oh, if you got to guess how far you need, I mean, maybe think about looking at one of the other ones under there, and you'll know. Oh, it needs to be that far. It's crushed down. But in this case, you don't have that. You've got this little stem touching the U-bar. Well, that will touch the U-bar when it's depressed, and then and then it trips your key, uh, your type type bar. But yeah, it trips the escapement too. Um, so, looking at this machine from the bottom here, I've bent it, uh, corrected it, you know, quite a bit, and everything works, but I was just doing this video to show you that correction in case yours is bent. Um, so that, like, if you're standing on its back that you can't see, there's the cork inside there. Now, don't compress this too much, but in this case, I can grab on it here or whatever. Um, maybe even here, get my hand out of the way, and just grab it and bring it 
back up, right? There. So that when you're looking at the machine from the bottom, you can see that cork again if it's all bent away. Uh, now, now it should trip fine. I mean, that's, I'm not going to monkey with that anymore because that's good. And we'll just try it. Um, not much else to tell. Everything was work on this. Everything. So I even used a used draw bit, drawstring out of like an Olivetti or something in it. I just went with the parts I had. I didn't put any any money in it except the ribbon, I guess. But, And when I sell one, which I probably do with this, because I don't, I don't like not having the touch control. I don't like the heaviness of it. But um, I usually don't ask an arm and a leg in my price either. Um, and I just sell through Craigslist and stuff, and then I know people aren't aren't getting screwed over. So I always feel good about that. Got away from IBM's yesterday. I gave one to a girl who um, could use one for parts. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy L A Z Y dog. So that's how you do it. That wouldn't be my lazy dog there, would it? Have a good day, everybody.